In tonight's Political Insider, Ryan's nomination. Republican Representative Paul Ryan has officially been nominated to replace outgoing Speaker John Boehner, but the latest budget deal is already putting him to the test. Joining me with the latest is Kelsey Snell, reporter for the Washington Post. She joins us from the Russell Senate Office Building on Capitol Hill. Kelsey, the road for Ryan's nomination has been a bumpy one. At first he said he didn't want the job, but then he reconsidered under certain conditions. Ryan's expected to officially win the Senate during a full House vote, that win the seat tomorrow. What kind of support does he have from hardline conservatives? Well, the hardline conservatives still haven't come around, and there wasn't really a great expectation that he would win all of them. Uh, he was nominated by the party earlier today uh, with about 200 votes. About 40 of them voted against him. It's not entirely clear if all of those people who voted against him will stay, uh, you know, stay in the anti-Ryan camp when the vote comes to the full floor. They may change their vote and decide to vote with the party. Now, the current budget bill in the House could be the first test of Ryan's leadership ability. Conservatives don't like the bill, but it has mostly bipartisan support. Ryan says he'll support the measure, but noted that the process, quote, stinks. How fine of a line will Ryan have to walk here, Kelsey? Well, they set up this budget deal uh, to make sure that outgoing House Speaker John Boehner takes most of the responsibility for it. So it may look, it, Ryan may get to walk away with his hands pretty clean. Um, it's completely up in the air right now whether or not the conservatives actually believe that Ryan's hands were clean. Uh, the process that goes forward though is going to be relatively painless assuming the budget bill passes both the House and the Senate. All they'll have to do is go back through all the appropriations bills that determine how much money will be spent by each agency and each part of the government and kind of reconcile those with the new budget numbers. And that, you know, that is a fairly regular process that they can do without a lot of headaches. Well, let me drill into that a bit more. Could Ryan's support of this bill set the tone for his leadership uh, speakership? Boehner has had a hard time corralling those on the far right. Will Ryan face the same challenges? I think that the same 40 Republicans that you saw in the House Freedom Caucus, the very hardline conservatives, are not likely to be swayed by any individual personality. It's very difficult to see what would have satisfied them other than some dramatic rules changes that could undermine the way that the House operates. You know, many have placed outgoing House Speaker John Boehner at the center of the dysfunction on Capitol Hill. Will Ryan's new role change the Republican infighting and partisan politics, or do you think we'll see more of the same? Well, I think Ryan has said that what he would like to do is move the party back to having a conversation about principles and ideas and less about tactics and political infighting. Whether or not he'll be successful will really depend on whether or not he can convince the hardliners that he's working in everybody's best interest. Though I will say those political hardliners really don't have a great incentive to change their position. They're easily reelected in their home districts and they often tell us here on the Hill that what they say when they are when they fight against leadership it gets them huge huge fundraising back home and it, it helps their reelection bid even removing the political hardliners from the conversation for the time being I'm hearing a lot of conservatives I'm going to ask what you've heard on Capitol Hill throughout the day they think that, that they've given into everything that the Obama administration wanted out of this budget well I think that it's a mixed bag there are plenty of people like Republican Tom Cole from Oklahoma and he brings with him a large number of centrists who really feel like a deal is a deal and there is no such thing as a compromise where both sides win and while the White House may have gotten increased spending Republicans got a lot when it comes to reforms to Social Security reforms to Medicare and increased bu um, budget space for military spending so in the end I think that people will come around to this deal I just think that they were not happy with the process and they were not happy to have a giant deal like this just appear on a Monday now we heard about the conservative side what about Democrats are there some Democrats who are unhappy with this whole thing? There are. There are some Democrats who wish there would have been more spending. There are some Democrats who are uncomfortable with any cuts to Medicare or Social Security. Uh, the primary cuts on Medicare come from payments to doctors, so doctors will wind up getting paid less over time. And there are some Democrats who will oppose that, but I have to say there's more unity within the Democratic Party and more of a sense that they need to stick together if they're going to have any leverage against Republicans. Good to get your insight. Kelsey Snell, reporter for The Washington Post. Thanks again, Kelsey. Thank you.